There are hundreds of charts in Excel, but in finance, you only need seven. And I'll show you exactly which one, when to use them, and the mistakes to avoid. So stay until the end because I left my favorite chart, the only one that can tell a story on its own for the last. I'm Sufyan and I help finance professionals present numbers in a way that gets them understood and acted upon. If you want to upgrade your financial storytelling skills, make sure you hit subscribe. All right, let's dive in. Seven charts you need to know in finance, starting with number one, bar charts or column charts. Bar charts are the bread and butter of finance. They're great when you need to compare categories like showing revenues across different regions or comparing actuals versus budget. Yes, you can even use them for time, but only for short periods like 12 months and in combination with another chart. Any longer than that and it becomes unreadable. Now let's design one. Start by deleting everything Excel gives you by default. The title, the grid lines, the borders, the legends. Then use your company's colors, not random bright ones that Excel will give you. Keep the design aligned with your brand and marketing will appreciate that. Label the axes clearly or delete them if you label your data directly. Next step, avoid clutter. Don't let every bar scream for attention. Highlight what matters and decrease the attention, mute the rest. And finally, when you have a clear message, add an annotation to make it even clearer. Chart number two, the line chart. Now, if you want to show a trend over time, line charts are your best friend. Think of revenues month by month or churn rate across the year or the margin percentage across the year or the quarters, for example. They make trends crystal clear even when you add multiple lines, actuals, budgets, forecasts, all in one chart and still readable. Here's how to make it clean. First, remove the chart border and the grid line. Again, only if your goal is to present a chart for explanatory purposes. Then, and I know the purists will hate me for this, make your lines curved. Yes, curved. Because we're not doing statistical analysis here, we're storytelling and that's what's important here. Curved lines make your visuals softer and easier to read. And in my experience, much more appreciated. Next, drop the legend and add the category directly at the end of each line, not at the bottom. That way, people instantly know which line is which. And for forecasted values, make that part of the line dotted. It visually signals what's projected without saying a word. Chart number three, pie chart. Ah, the pie chart. The ugly duck of charts. No one likes them except me. They're not great for everything, but they are great for one thing, showing proportion clearly. Expense breakdown by departments, market share by products, the rule is to keep it to two, three, four slices maximum. You add labels or percentages and sort them by size. Do that and suddenly the pie chart becomes one of the easiest to read. Because no matter what people say, people easily understand a pie chart compared to others. And here's how to do it right. Limit to two or three slices for maximum. More than that, and it becomes unreadable. Never, ever, ever explode the chart. It's unnecessary and distracting. And if you want to highlight one slice, like the biggest cost center, the biggest region, you can color it differently. Everything else stays neutral. This pie chart is about showing the message. So forget about all the colors that you have. Chart number four, the scatter plot. Scatter plots are less common in final presentations, but they're powerful in analysis and exploratory presentations. Say you want to see if sales are correlated with marketing spends, or if employee performance links to salary. Scatter plots helps you spot outliers and relationships, but don't put them in an executive deck. They'll lose everyone. Instead, use them behind the scenes to find the story that bring the conclusion into your presentation. 
So here's how to do that. Start with small, simple dots, not giant circles. Remove the chart background and grid lines, add clear axis titles, and make sure both axes start from zero. Then add a trend line and label it directly if you can. That's all you need. Scatter plots are for you to find patterns or when you are working in a session, like when you are working with a CFO or with your colleagues. Once you've got the insight, show the conclusion directly, not the scatter plot. By the way, if you want to go beyond charts and actually present finance like a story, I created a free seven day starter pack seven videos, seven lessons straight to your inbox. You'll find the link in the description below or go directly to the financecircle.com slash starter pack. Now back to our charts. Chart number five, speedometer or Joe's chart. These are perfect for showing one KPI against the target. For example, a bid margin versus the budget or the revenue versus the budget or the KPI of acquisition versus the budget. They're visual, they're striking, but honestly, they're better for dashboards. And sometimes the cleanest option is even simpler. Write the number big and put the variance below. Cards do the job just as well, often better. So here's how to make it look clean. Use a donut setup and reduce it to three segments, red, yellow, and green. Keep it minimal. You don't need fancy needles or shadows. In the center, put the KPI in big bold number and just below it, the variance versus the target. Sometimes you don't even need a George at all. Just write the number large, ad versus budget below and it will be even clearer. Simple beats spectacular. Chart number six, bullet charts. Bullet charts are fantastic when you want to show progress toward a goal on the longer term. They pack a lot into a small space, the actual, the target, and the ranges. They're especially useful in dashboards, but if you don't want to use bullet charts, the alternative is a simple combo chart. A bar for the actuals and a line for the targets. Easy to read, easy to compare. Build it using a bar chart with an overlay or a combo chart. The actual value is in your company's color and the target is shown with a clear line with a contrasting color. And then you can remove all the green lines and all the clutter that you have in the bar and the line charts. You keep the labels minimal and if you prefer, you can use a combo chart instead. One bar for actuals, one line for the target. Clean, easy and precise. And finally, chart number seven, and I left the best for the last, the waterfall chart. Why? Because it's the only chart that can tell a story on its own. It shows how you get from one point to another, from budget to actual, from revenue to margin, step by step. Every driver is visible, but here's the trick, your categories, have to follow your story. Do not add the accounting lines like revenues, COGS, OPEX, etc. No, you need to add business elements that actually explain the variance. When it's done right, the waterfall chart is not just a chart, it's your story visualized. Let's design one. Start by using clear categories that match your story. In this case, let's say that it's going to be B2B contract renegotiation, inflation on raw material, volumes on B2C, and payroll costs. Each one becomes a story element. Now, Excel automatically uses colors that are friendly for column blind users, but I'd say change them to green and red if you know that no one is color impaired. And one more thing, delete the connectors. They're more there to control that your totals match, but they also create visual noise. And the end result will be a clean, beautiful waterfall that literally tells your story. So with just these seven charts, you can cover almost any financial story. Forget the hundreds of options in Excel, stick to these and you'll always be clear. And if you want to go further than charts, grab my free seven days starter pack on financial storytelling. It will help you turn these charts into real story people act on. The link is below, or you can go to financecircle.com slash starter pack. I'll see you there.